I'm here to challenge you to think about how we educate our children. Could they learn engineering in kindergarten? Little kids, they can say and do things that make you cringe. I still remember the time I dropped my son off at preschool, and as I was driving away, I overheard him ask a teacher why your teeth are so yellow. <laughs> so, they have no filter. But that's also why nothing stops them from believing anything is possible. And because of that, they are capable of far more than we realize. And the time for them to start growing and identifying as problem solvers is today. Because they're going to be looking out for all of us tomorrow. So you see this shoe? It was engineered by a five-year-old girl. I'm about to take you on a journey into the mind of a child engineer. I'm the tour guide, and it's a job I never dreamed of, but three moments in my life brought me here to you today. The first moment was in my freshman year at MIT. My friend Scott was sitting in the hallway outside my room at 3 a.m., and he was working feverishly on something he'd made himself. He was taking MIT's famous design and manufacturing class, where every student gets a standard parts kit. It's a box with wires and motors and other hardware, and they have to make a robot to compete in a contest. Now, normally, you can hear Scott's laugh a mile away, but that night, he was silent. And he had this hunger in his eyes that I will never forget. The second moment was when I was an engineer in North Carolina. I was tapped to join the team in charge of starting up an optical fiber factory from scratch. And it was grueling. We ran into challenge after challenge. But one night, we hit the start button and finally saw our first real sellable product come out the other end. And that felt like winning the gold. That's when I finally tasted what Scott was after in that hallway, the experience of creating something from nothing and seeing it work. And the third moment, it was when I became a mom. Now, if there's one thing that makes you feel like you're a newbie and you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> it's parenthood. But there is something I did learn about myself early on. And it stemmed from all those times I'd feel my kids tug on my shirt, and I'd hear their voices say, look, Mommy, look what I did. That's when I discovered something, that no matter how fulfilling it is to say I did it, like when we started up the plant, for me, it is a million times sweeter to hear those words from a child. So when it was time to go back to work, I didn't return to engineering. I chose education because I wanted children to experience that I did it moment for themselves. I made my way to Kingsley Montessori School in Boston, where my peers and I created a child-friendly version of that MIT class Scott took. Every kindergartner got a standard parts kit. But instead of wires and motors, they got stuff from the junk drawer. Bubble wrap, duct tape, cardboard. And instead of robots, they made shoes. <laughs> now, why shoes? First of all, you can't make a working robot out of duct tape and bubble wrap. Not yet, anyway. Second, everyone understands and uses shoes. But we needed a map to guide their thinking. And that's where the Boston Museum of Science's Engineering as Elementary diagram comes in. This is a blueprint. It boils the engineering design process down into five steps. Ask, imagine, plan, create, and improve. So this map was our guide. My peers and I challenged every kindergartner to design a functional shoe, document their work, and 
deliver a formal presentation. Now, I'll admit, even we thought, mm, that might be a reach. <laughs> but you know what? With kids, it's all in the way you say it. So this is how we framed it. Guess what? You're going to be an engineer for three weeks, and you're going to make a real shoe all by yourself. And we're going to take lots of pictures, and you're going to get the pictures and make a very special book about how you made your shoe. And then we're going to take the pages and show them on a big screen. It'll be like a movie we can watch with your parents and all your friends. See, that doesn't sound like work. That sounds like the chance to be a star. So that's how our workshop was born. My colleagues and I all said, all right, let's do this. And we all held hands and jumped. And this is what happened. So ladies and gentlemen, the tour is now beginning. Prepare to enter the mind of a child engineer. So first, we talked in general about what engineers do. We find and solve problems. We help people by making useful things, like cars, inhalers, diapers. And afterwards, one little girl wrote this in her journal. Engineers solve many problems by first figuring out what the problem is, then trying to solve it. How many adults struggle with figuring out what the problem is? <laughs> How many times do we solve the wrong problem? Then we talked about what makes a good shoe. And the children came up with two measurable design criteria. The shoe has to stay on your foot, one, when you walk from one point to the other, and two, when you jump 10 times. <laughs> then we passed out the standard parts kits. That's when the wheels started turning. Like this boy, he kept running back and forth between the sink and his parts pile. And I finally said to him, what are you doing? And he said, I'm testing to see if it's waterproof, because he wanted to make a waterproof shoe. And then once all the kids were done imagining the shoes, they were chomping at the bit to get started. But we said, no cutting or gluing without a plan. So they all sat down. And they sketched the pictures that were inside their heads. And those plans looked like this. <laughs> Detailed. And then once I signed off on their plans, then they could get to work. Now, making shoes is fun, but that's not where the real meat is. Engineers find and solve problems. Now, if you're a teacher, you know there's that one kid in your class who thinks it's a race. And when that little boy or girl would run up to me and say, I'm done, mine worked on the first try, I'd call them on it. I'd say, you're not done. You haven't engineered anything. Go put that shoe back on your foot and listen to what it's telling you, because it needs to be better tomorrow than it is today. Otherwise, your story might be boring. Ooh, that's when their stories came to life. We said, write down all your ideas. Write down what worked. So this boy wrote down how he added felt because his shoe was sticking to his foot. And another one added what he called a toe cover because his toes kept sticking out. And then we said, write down what was hard. That's the best part. That's what makes your story juicy. So this girl discovered her shoe was uncomfortable, so she added padding. And another girl started over because she realized she spent all day making it beautiful, but it didn't even fit. <laughs> then they all practiced their presentations when their books and shoes were done. And then when the big day came, the kids were all giddy with excitement. And these two showed up wearing blazers. <laughs> Children were fighting to go first. And then every single child got up by themselves and shared their work with confidence, pride, and joy. And after their presentations, they each walked around the room slowly with their prototypes, letting everyone get a close look. 
It was like they were showing off a baby. <laughs> and those close-ups revealed just how brilliant every shoe was. But the greatest accomplishment for these children is none of those things. It's that they learned something about themselves. They discovered these four words, I can do it. And their sense of triumph shines through in countless journal entries that my colleagues and I stumbled on after the children handed their journals in, like this one. I like to make my shoes because I think it's fun, and I like to do it because it is hard. I love making my shoe, and I chased a dream. <laughs> Both of those entries is a child saying, look what I did. Our children are our future. And someday, they're going to tackle much bigger challenges than making a shoe that stays on your foot. So we need to be giving them real opportunities now to let them grow and identify as problem solvers and to seek better ways of doing things. So join the conversation in your community. Support programs that develop these skills. You can't find them, start them. Because every single child is on a journey. And every day is a fresh start, a chance to try bold ideas and to test them, even if it's messy, and to embrace struggle as the best part of the adventure. Thank you. Thank you.